Good afternoon. We're tracking a couple chances of light rain or thunder showers as we head through the afternoon hours. 75 are high Sioux Falls, 78 in Aberdeen, 79 up here, and 78 in Rapid City. Those die down this evening. Another round starting in central and western South Dakota. 57 are low Sioux Falls, 56 in Aberdeen, 58 in Pier, and 54 in Rapid City. A couple more chances of rain and thunderstorms as we head into this weekend. We'll take a look at those coming up as we begin midday in Kelloland. Live from Kelloland Media Group, midday in Kelloland. The 47th Annual Ringneck International Tournament is underway in Sioux Falls. We're going to take you there in just a moment. Plus, President Joe Biden is campaigning in a battleground state today. A look at what voters and lawmakers think of the campaign. Good afternoon and thanks for having us in. A Sioux Falls man was arrested following a shooting incident. It took place near 33rd and Cliff Avenue last night. Quinton Latrell Jackson is accused of shooting at one adult and three juveniles at around 7.20 p.m. He's charged with several counts of aggravated assault as well as other charges. Police say that Jackson left the scene but came back after police arrived. The alleged victims recognized Jackson and told police he was the shooter. Jackson allegedly fled the scene and was caught after a suit with the help of the South Dakota Highway Patrol. It's uncertain what prompted the shooting. The incident is still under investigation. Officers responded to a call about a house fire early this morning and when officers arrived to the house in Hartford shortly before 3 a.m. the detached garage was engulfed in flames and spreading to the house. There were no injuries reported. The fire is speculated to be related to fireworks and the incident is being investigated by the Minnehaha County Sheriff's Office. Later tonight on Kelland News you're going to hear from a captain with the Sheriff's Office to learn more about the fire as well as his safety message as more people celebrate with fireworks this weekend. One man is dead after being hit by a car in Pringle, South Dakota last week. The South Dakota Department of Public Safety says a car was heading south and collided with a bicycle heading north. The people in the car were not hurt. The 82-year-old bicyclist was flown to a nearby hospital where he died on Wednesday. South Dakota Highway Patrol is investigating the crash. In weather, not a whole lot going on. There are some spotty showers here and there though, right Megan? They could be getting going as we head into the early afternoon hours. But other than that, those are going to be very scattered in nature and die down as we head towards this evening. Then another round possible as we head into the day tomorrow. Right now, though, some sunshine here in Sioux Falls. A few clouds starting to filter in. These temperatures are well below normal. We're sitting at 74 degrees in Sioux Falls. We do have that northwest breeze at about 15 miles an hour. As we head around our area in Rapid City, also with some sunshine, these slightly below normal temperatures, 74 degrees there as well. That northwest breeze at 17. Right now, 74 also in Yankton, 72 in Brookings, 71 in Mowbridge, 75 in Phillip, and a cooler 64 degrees in Custer. Now we do have a stronger wind starting to pick up in central and western South Dakota. Right now our winds though, 5 to 15 miles an hour. We'll keep our winds mostly light as we head overnight tonight and into the day tomorrow. On satellite, just a few clouds starting to filter in western South Dakota. Nothing is coming out of those yet. We're watching that chance for a few scattered showers and even thunder showers in eastern Kettleland as we head into this afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon and evening has the better chance to see some thunderstorms with that level one out of five risk of severe weather there in green. We do have that level two out of five in yellow down in Nebraska. Large hail and strong winds going to be our main threat. But for today, partly to mostly cloudy skies, our winds are mostly light. 75 are high Sioux Falls, 78 in Aberdeen. 79 appear in 78 in Rapid City. Again, with those scattered chances of rain or thunder showers, that chance returning into central and western South Dakota as we head through the overnight hours, with our lows dropping into the 50s to low 60s. Tomorrow, just a slight bit warmer, upper 70s to low 80s for our highs, with that chance of rain and thunderstorms. We'll take a closer look at the timing and what to expect in just a little bit. 
Sounds good, Megan. 134 softball teams from across the region and Canada are set to compete in the 47th annual Ringneck International Tournament this weekend in Sioux Falls. This morning, 125 players participated in a unique pre-tournament showcase at Dunham Park, putting their skills to the test during the Ringneck College Softball Showcase. Give these uh, young ladies an opportunity for exposure. You know, here they're going to get in front of 15 college coaches and then the opportunity to learn and also just to be in an environment uh, to compete with other kids uh, where they're really not the scoreboard. Southpaw players from as far away as Wyoming and Canada participate in the showcase. We'll hear from a pair of players from Winnipeg, Manitoba about playing in front of college coaches tonight on Kelo Land News. Coming up in tonight's Eye on Kel Land, we're going to introduce you to Bobby and our Linda Peacock siblings, who will soon be taking the stage at the Levitt in Sioux Falls. Our report will give you a taste of their musicianship, for sure, but it also looks at who they are and what music means to these artists. In national news, President Joe Biden's holding a campaign rally and will sit for a network television interview as he tries to fend off growing calls to drop out of the presidential race following his dismal debate performance. Erica Brown reports now from Washington, D.C. While the crowd outside the White House chanted four more years during last night's fireworks show, President Biden's political future could hinge on what happens today as he campaigns in Battleground, Wisconsin and sits for a television interview following his poor debate performance. Where Joe Biden struggled last week is he lost the thread, he lost the focus on making it a choice between Donald Trump and Joe Biden in terms of what future do you want? And I think that's what Joe Biden and Democrats are going to need to get back to. On Thursday, Massachusetts Congressman Seth Moulton became the third House Democrat to publicly urge the president to withdraw. Now is the time for him to follow in one of our founding father, George Washington's footsteps and step aside to let new leaders rise up and run against Donald Trump. CBS News has learned the president told governors in a Wednesday night meeting he needs to curtail events that begin after 8 p.m. and get more sleep, according to meeting participants. And California Governor Gavin Newsom, who was there, pledged his support. There was no one that walked out of that and say, we've got your back, Mr. President. No one. But Democratic voters in key battleground states are concerned. I think he's done a good job, but it's time that he stepped down for sure. The Biden-Harris campaign released a new plan Friday, which includes $50 million in campaign ads and an aggressive travel schedule to each battleground state to try to shore up support. Erica Brown, CBS News, Washington. The president's rally today in Madison, Wisconsin, comes less than two weeks before former president and GOP frontrunner Donald Trump is expected to be nominated in Milwaukee at the Republican National Convention. Still ahead, on a 